Hello community. Let's talk about auto robotic transformer system. Now, beautiful Sunday afternoon in your city and suddenly something happens, an accident, a catastrophe. Now, the idea is now to employ 20 androids instead of human beings. And those androids have now one task to help humans. Now, Imagine they are here deployed, 20 entities, and they have now to interact in a city environment with other humans. And we look today at the intelligence distribution between those androids, between those units. Of course, we use vision language model and vision language action models. So we are talking here combination from LLM, vision language and robotics. Now you can think that each robot has its own capabilities, but what do you think we start new? Each robot has the same basic programming, the same basic AI system inherently, and now those robots learn. This was here the basis for this publication by Google DeepMind, Auto Robotic Transformer the foundation models for a large scale orchestration of robotic agents. And in this study, Google looked here at the deployment of 20 robots in parallel and how they learn an environment that has not been predefined. Now, if you enter this area here for the first time, I would recommend here this beautiful um, scientific summary Stanford University, Princeton University, UT Austin, NVIDIA, Google DeepMind, TU Berlin, and Shanghai Jiao Tong University from December of 2023. And they give you an excellent overview about foundation models like GPT-4 in robotics. And you see here, for pure robotics, you have the robot policy learning, the language image goal conditioned value learning, a high level task planning, this will be important for us today. LLM based code generation, also important, and robot transformer system. And we will focus here on RT2 and its further development in this video. Of course, we have object detection and 3D classification, and semantic segmentation and a 3D scene representation for our robots at an emergency scene. Great. Based on this, let's make it simple. So we are talking about distributed artificial intelligence. This means we have 20 androids that are entering a scene and they should work together as a team. And they have now their own intelligence. Each android has its own intelligence, either as an observer with a multimodal vision language model or as an active model with a multimodal vision language action model our pure robotic system. Now that you have seen Atlas in action, let's imagine you have 20 of those beautiful machines here with interaction in a city block here for example, for a traffic emergency. Now, those entities, if they are now deployed and they have not some free knowledge on exactly where they are, you remember that the task is easy. You have autonomous vision language action models, but now in the real world. So, first task is, of course, vision. To just look around, or the thing just looks around, 330. 60 degree environment scan. Second task, vision. Identify all objects. Identify every person, every car, everything. Task three. Now this is a vision language combination. You have object relation. Pedestrians walking on the street, children trying to cross a road, cars accelerating. And now this system has to come up with a scenario, a synthetic scenario, of all object relations in sight. You want to have here a full description of your environment. And each and every of our 20 Atlas system is doing this in real time, independent of the other one. 
Now, their interesting question if you talk about the coordination of intelligence. Either everything is reported back, all observation, all visual and scenario interpretation are reported back to a central command, GPT-X system. And no, this is not our GPT-X. Please do not imagine in this in this particular way. It is more that some machine has an overview. If something is happening here, this block, all the consequences for different locations here are also included in actual decision by this Android. So we have more or less three options. Let's have a look at these three options. First, all observations are by central command, and this is more or less that here our GPTX system is controlling each of our 20 Android system. Great. Now, of course, our central command has to learn how to deploy those 20 units in the most efficient way to perform a specific task. Therefore, you know, whenever an AI system has to learn, we need a lot of training data. So our central command needs a lot of training data, very specific training data for this situation to fine tune itself on a particular task, given that we have almost impossible many different interaction and scenario interpretation. So this is a highly interesting field. And you know, we are talking about a policy optimization for a group of 20 androids, given a specific task, a traffic emergency. So we need training data but remember, we need training data for now for an ensemble of vision language action models, primarily for central command, but of course also for the active interaction of our 20 units. Let's look at option B. Option B is a little bit different because now we have an interactive swarm artificial intelligence. You see, we do not just have a central command, but now these units are autonomous and interactive. This means those autonomous androids now develop specific tasks. If they are somewhere in a situation they have not been trained on and they recognize the situation that they are, they have to perform certain action. If, the example with the burning cars, you have now to decide what action to take for each of our 20 units. So you have a kind of a situational awareness to make decision and you will encounter or Atlas will encounter untrained object configuration in its environment. So we are interested in how can we train this? How do we have here a training set for this swarm intelligence, given we have vision language action models? And it's not just that those action models can start to communicate with each other. We want to have a higher form of intelligence of this swarm. Of course, policy optimization for a swarm of 20 androids we need a lot of training data here for this task differentiation and autonomous action by our system. Again, imagine this is happening here at this specific corner. What you want, of course, here from a central intelligence. Now, not in particular here, any action defined within the circle, but to take care about other regulatory systems, like, for example, traffic lights and so on. Google made this study. Google published this now and says, look, we have 20 robotic system. And of course, we have chosen here a civilian environment. And this environment is, you are now be surprised, a kitchen. So first is exploration. Map your environment or load from the cache. Here, something that somebody already scanned here, the environment identified all the objects. Now, those 20 robots are given a specific task, but now the robots have to decide what objects do I see, what objects can I reach with my functionality here, and then to solve the given task, I divide it in subtasks. And I have now a set of subtasks, and now the question is, can I have a combination of subtasks so that my main task is able to be performed? And if you have decided from the subtask that you can do, or maybe multiple uh, robots have to work together with the different subtask, then we can do the task and then we learn something here together as a collective, as a swarm intelligence. Because you also have a kind of differentiation. 
And then you have here each dot, for example, is a task description and the robot learned how to do this interacting with its environment. And you know, if one robot learned this, all the other robots now immediately know how to do it. Interesting point is, of course, how we transfer this data. But that's another point. So we have here a complex set of learned tasks. And yes, in a simple TSNE uh, visualization, we can understand, hey, is this a similar task to this other task? So if it's similar, we group it together in a cluster. And then if you learn one dot of a task here, it is easy to learn all the other tasks in this cluster because you have the same functionalities. Google analyzed this here in particular for this civilian and non-military environment. So for my younger viewers, easy. We have first step visual exploration. If you put a robot somewhere, it has never been before. So we're not talking about production robotic system that just repeat the same action again and again and again. We're talking about autonomous robots that are now released into the wild, into unseen environments. So the robot has to make sense, identifies all the objects, creates a synthetic scene, describes the scene, and then a central intelligence, either the robot itself or the swarm or some other system, generates now a set of potential tasks given the objects inside that the robot can manipulate. Then somebody chooses here a specific task in a sequence that will align with the primary alpha task for the swarm of these robots. And this is what Google DeepMind looked at, how to distribute intelligence, how to learn each and every robot this, and what is what new methodologies we will encounter in this scenario. Now imagine two scenarios. We have here a non-civilian scenario and a civilian scenario. Let's look at the civilian case first. We record with, I don't know, 100 cameras, 20 persons living in a flat, 20 persons acting in a kitchen, trying to keep the kitchen clean, prepare food in the kitchen, interacting here in the kitchen. So we have a lot of visual training data. And then the task is simple. We just have to transfer this. So now we take 20 androids that get the same task, live there, keep the kitchen clean, whatever. Now the interesting part of this, and this is why I show you this is, B can learn from the recorded pattern of our group A and develop new pattern or new behavior of its own. So this means you have here a certain level of experience from recorded 20 human persons that the Android system, the swarm intelligence, can start with and optimize itself for its configuration. And now we do not have a one object configuration but we have a set of 20 androids who work together. And this working together is really the speciality we are looking at. I think this question opens up the box of the Pandora, because finally we ask, hey, should our future artificial combined intelligence swarm system think verbally? So describe everything that all the robots see in verbal commands. Now I see car one, then I see car two, now car three passes along. Or do we think visually? Because if I, as a human, I stand here and I look here at the traffic pattern, I don't word each element that I see, but I see there's a stream of cars. There is a stream of bikes passing by. And I know what to expect based on my experience. But I do do not do a verbal translation to understand what I see, but I have a visual memory. I understand exactly what I can expect and when I can cross this street safely. So interesting, if you do this now on a robotic swarm intelligence, do you focus on the training of the visual part or do you think that the verbal part, if we have a central language model as the main unit behind all of this. This is, I think, still an open question. So on what level do we merge those systems? Interesting also, very specific to the task given. Now, Google shows us here in the study that 
they use here the auto robotic transformer systems in three modes. Now, the first mode is easy, tailor operation. So either a human, let's say somewhere in a military, for each drone you have a human operator that tells the drone exactly what to do, virtual reality, whatever. Or, interesting, we have a scripted pick policy option. So this means for each task, you have here more or less some clear instruction what to do. Now, this code, of course, has been generated by an AI system, but Google found that it is necessary that humans look at this and optimize it further for more possible configuration that you might encounter. But as you can see, we are here. Do a downward motion to the object and lift and then stop. Asynchronous in a loop, so we must continually check where we are in the action sequence and then end. So we have here AI systems that generate here the code for each and every action for us. Of course, then you just say, hey, the robot says, hey, I'm a robot operating in an office environment. You can describe various scenes to me and I'll describe different manipulation tasks that I can perform here in this office environment. Then the human operator would say, OK, so here are five descriptions of the room. And I want that you, I don't know, change the light bulb. So you at first put the chair right next to the table. Then you step on the chair. Then you step from the chair to the table. And then you are able to reach the light bulb and you change the light bulb. Yes, I know it is an intelligent example. So you give here a description what you want. And you tell the robot here, and the subset of objects that you can use is the chair, the table, and the light bulb. From this training data, the robot tries now to learn autonomously, and those tries that are successful now enter here the learning data set for our intelligence system. Now, of course, don't be boring. Don't place everything already in place, distribute it somewhere in the rooms, all the objects. Make it really an interesting task for a robotic system to learn autonomously. And then those learned data will enter the training data set. Or, and this is also started here, RT2. If you are not familiar with RT2, I have a set of videos here on my channel about AI robotics. Intro, POM E, Vima, it is the historic development, more or less, what happened here, reinforcement learning. But here you have a video about RT2, and I focus here on the publication by DeepMind. Google DeepMind is here really one of the leading institutions from July 2023, and they explain here in detail RT2. So vision, language, action model, the transfer from web knowledge here to a robotic control system. And of course, we're only talking here about the civilian sector, the non-military sector, but I can, I think you can imagine that, yeah, you know what I mean. This is an interesting side. Assume that this trend continues, Google tells us, and the bottleneck will be action diversity. So to collect useful, diverse motion that make progress towards new tasks in novel environments. Translated, they need training data. They need a lot of training data for their advanced AI system. So if you now look at what they did in their study, they had 53 robots over seven months. They collected 77,000 new episodes of autonomous robotic interaction in different environments. So they collect a beautiful training data set. And as they say, they have also training data set now with a peak load of over 20 simultaneously robot interaction, robot learning together as tailor operated, given a script or with RT2 algorithm. So you see this multi-robot deployment now is really something interesting. How to learn, how to tune the intelligence for those systems for those kind of distributed system. And as you can see here, this is again a two-dimensional TSNI block. If every dot here is a task learned during this 77,000 new episode, and you can imagine that here the training data set is extremely valuable 
for the development of the AI system and the training of the AI system. So you see those global corporations are here, of course, leading here the race to this particular robotic AI evolution. And I guess you can imagine that the military is also heavily involved in this topic. For us, the most important question is, how do we transfer one learned task from one robot to the other robots? So all the tasks are now included in all the different set of tasks for all the robots whenever they encounter a new situation in a foreign environment. Maybe I will do a video on this particular transfer of knowledge because this is not that suddenly our VLA system communicate with human language, but it is a much denser learning process and a much denser communication process between AI subsystems. But also now Google tells us, Google DeepMind tells us, hey, as we explore further direction, and you can imagine in the civilian and in the non-civilian sector, there might be applications for this. A chief question is how a robot should autonomously act in the world. Whenever you see here on a scientific paper that a corporate corporation is asking, hey, how should a robot live here together with the humans and act autonomously in the world? You know, this is really an interesting question. And luckily, it is up to the global corporation and for the military to decide. And if you remember here, Atlas, I think it was really amazing. And if you remember that this video is one year old, this study is already one year old. I think AI 2024 will be amazing because it could be, it is the year where the AI system leave our computer and our monitor screens and step out in the real world. So, as you can see, I follow here the recommendation by GPT-4 to end my YouTube video with an emotional trigger for you. But of course, it is also in our possibility if we do research and if we develop systems that are helpful and friendly to humanity. It is up to us to decide. See you in my next video.